Let's assume that aliens existed. Imagine they, about 300 years ago, remotely studied Earth and tried to pick up some signals. Then 200 years ago. And 20 years ago. This is a very primitive way of thinking of that. On the one hand, we humans for decades have been trying to register artificial signals from supposed alien civilizations, though unsuccessfully so far. But on the other hand, if they actually existed, they could be doing the same. Accidentally or proactively looking for signals, they could detect radio waves that we've been broadcasting into the universe for over a hundred years. Could they, though? That's where it becomes complicated. What signals? How far are they detectable? What kind of antenna would they need? So could hypothetical alien civilizations pick up our signals? Are aliens cringing while watching our TV shows about UFOs and aliens? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the detectability of our radio signals, what kind of antenna would aliens need to detect them, and how far from Earth could they do it, and are there potentially habitable planets at those distances? My name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. So the first limiting factor is time and the speed of light. You might have already heard something like this. We started actively using radio frequencies to transmit signals in the beginning of the 20th century. Signals don't just travel to receivers on Earth, they also leak into space. So we began broadcasting radio about 100 years ago. Radio, as any other type of electromagnetic radiation, is moving with the speed of light. That means that at maximum our signals reached as far as a little over 100 light years. So we are in the middle of our radio sphere, a bubble with a radius of some 100 light years, or 200 light years in diameter. This is a cool illustration of how tiny our radio bubble looks on the galactic scale. To even be able to see it, we have to zoom in. But that just tells us how far signals from Earth could have reached according to the laws of physics, but whether they are detectable, that's a completely different story. A signal weakens drastically with distance. As any kind of electromagnetic radiation, radio follows the inverse square law, which states that the intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. If we are twice as far, the signal is four times weaker. 10 times farther, signal is 100 times weaker, and so on. And how strong would the early 20th century signals be tens of light years away? It's quite possible that it could be indistinguishable from the background radio noise. But that doesn't mean nothing is detectable. Here it becomes a little more nuanced. First, let's set the rules. How advanced that hypothetical alien civilization can be? I suggest we use a civilization of about the same level as ours. If they were behind us, they wouldn't have the technology to detect us. And if they were ahead of us, here we could only speculate what they would be capable of. So it is easier to compare with something we understand. This way we would at least have some limits and be able to have some specific conclusions. And let's suppose that life is also similar to ours. It's carbon-based life that requires water, so it needs similar conditions. Well, we haven't found any extraterrestrial life, so we can't be sure what kind of life can exist there. But again, it's easier to have some limits. Another problem is that even if they technically could detect our signals, we don't know if they would be able to tell if the signals were artificial. Besides our tiny little antenna, there is a huge number of powerful radio sources in space, even in our own solar system. Here are some radio emissions in our system. For instance, radio is emitted by bodies with powerful magnetic fields. Here we can see signals from the Sun, Jupiter and Earth. Yes, Earth is also a radio source. The most powerful emission is in the range of 50 to 500 kilohertz. It's dominated by a so-called AKR, or auroral kilometric radiation. Auroral because it comes from the regions of aurora. Kilometric because the radiation has wavelengths measured in kilometers. So they also have to be able to figure out the artificial nature of the signal. We actually have the same problem here on Earth. There were multiple instances of scientists detecting some unusual radio signals and having ideas that they might be artificial or extraterrestrial in nature. Those ideas usually aren't taken very seriously. The signal that at first was called LGM-1, Little Green Man. Some of you probably know what this weird signal with a predictable pulsation period turned out to be. It was a pulsar, a rapidly rotating neutron star. This is how pulsars were discovered and that also confirmed the existence of neutron stars. 
It is almost impossible to be 100% certain whether a signal is artificial and comes from an alien civilization or not, no matter how weird it looks. We may be just not aware of some natural physical processes, but at least we can rule out all the known processes, and then the chance that the signal is artificial would be higher. We also have to look for some patterns and perhaps encoded information. Also often natural radio sources cover a wide range of frequencies, whereas artificial ones have much narrower bandwidths. But again, often, but not always. In SETI they say that almost all of the signals narrower than 300 Hz are artificial. Also you could look at the way light is polarized, and it could look as if some information is encoded in that signal. But again, we can't be 100% certain. But at least it's not impossible to tell that the signal might be artificial. But could a hypothetical alien civilization actually pick up our signals? Technically, they could. There are many different kinds of radio transmitters on Earth. TV and radio broadcasts, cell phones, military radars and radars used for astronomy. We won't go into too much technical detail, but I will say that the detectability of our signals depend on several parameters. For instance, antenna gain. Let's imagine a transmitter that would work like this. It would be an isotropic radiator, which means it radiates in every direction. But with the same amount of energy, we could focus that signal using a mirror of a certain shape. Then our signal would be, well, more focused and at the same time stronger. Basically, antenna gain is a property that tells us how well the antenna is able to focus radiation. Transmission power, frequency and duration of a broadcast are all very important things. So taking all of this in consideration, we can already talk about some specific instruments whose broadcasts might be picked up by aliens. For instance, a recently collapsed Arecibo telescope. Even though it doesn't work anymore, its signals are still traveling across the galaxy. Systems like Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex and various military radars. All of those systems have high gain, power and they broadcast in relatively narrow bandwidth. The advantage is that these signals are detectable at very large distances, but the disadvantage is that they travel in a small set of directions. But on the other hand, there are TV carrier waves. They are weaker, but they point at the horizon in a way that while Earth is rotating, they basically cover all of the near-Earth space. So are there any estimates of how far signals could be detected? While I was looking for the information for this video, I stumbled upon an article with some estimates. There aren't estimates for different kinds of telescopes. Rather, it takes one specific kind, the one that we could build. Well, not just could, it is being built right now. I'm talking about the Square Kilometer Array. It's a radio interferometer that's being built by several countries. The plan is to create a system of radio telescopes with the combined collecting area of more than one square kilometer. If no further delays happen, it will start working in several years. So an alien civilization similar to ours could definitely build a system like this one. So with a, such a telescope, the estimates are the following. Aliens would be able to detect broadband TV and cell phone signals from a distance of 0.03 light years from Earth. Not very impressive. It's a bit more interesting with TV carrier waves. Those would be detectable at a distance of about 50 light years which is a significant part of our radio bubble. Signals of RT-70 telescope in Yevpatoria, a kilometer array would detect as far as 20,000 light years. Pavepost military radar would be detectable from 60,000 light years. Signals of Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex from 90,000 light years. And also its broadband signals could be detected from a distance of 4.5 light years. And for Arecibo it is 200,000 light years. And again 4.5 light years for broadband signals. So theoretically signals from several human instruments could be detected now inside our radio bubble. And in the future even basically across the whole galaxy. But that doesn't mean that we should get ready for the alien invasion. Such numbers can sound promising, but we have to remember that those instruments broadcast not all of the time and also they do it in a small set of directions. By the way, we can remember instances when signals to hypothetical alien civilizations were sent on purpose. For instance, the famous Arecibo message that was sent in 1974. Or more recent campaign of the Cosmic Call, signals that were sent from Ifpatoria. Those signals were sent not in some random directions, but to specifically chosen systems. But the fact that those signals were broadcasted during short periods of time makes it unlikely that anyone or 
anything would detect them. But those were more like symbolic acts rather than the actual attempts to contact aliens. But the main point is that now we know, inside of our radio sphere, using technology analogous to ours in principle, signals from Earth could be detected and separated from background noise. That's an interesting illustration of what aliens might be watching depending on how far they are. The only thing that this image is 10 years old, so now everything is 10 light years farther. There is another similar, more recent idea, but with music. Here you can see how far certain songs have reached. Imagine, let's say, at a distance of over 100 light years. An alien is pointing his antenna in the direction of Earth, and then... But the actual chance that someone would pick up our signals becomes lower due to several factors, one of which is... There is no one who is listening. Well, we can't know that for sure, but anyway, what about some promising planets in that region of space? So we've learned that in principle aliens could detect us. So perhaps 30, 40, 50 years ago some alien civilization found out about our existence and immediately sent spaceships to us. Just like in the remembrance of Earth's past. But hold on a second. Today it is estimated that on average every star in our galaxy has at least one planet. Are there any potentially habitable planets inside our radio bubble? So there can be about 15 to 17,000 stars in a sphere with a radius of about 100 light years. Then we also know that even the closest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, has planets, one of which is probably rocky and it is in a habitable zone. So it is not too close and not too far from the star, so liquid water could exist on its surface which is one of the main ingredients for life as we know it. So there are a lot of stars and planets inside our radio sphere. And even the closest star has already a habitable zone planet. Looking only at these two factors, it might seem that the chances are not that small. But let's not jump to conclusions. At a very basic level, there are several most important ingredients for life as we know it, like liquid water, energy source and a certain chemistry. So we can very roughly tell whether the planet could be potentially habitable or not. There is a huge list of factors that were necessary for life on Earth to emerge and exist for billions of years, and those are the ones that we are aware of. But here are at least some factors that lower our chances. I've said that there are quite a lot of stars in our radio bubble, but most of them are red dwarfs, or M-type stars. They are known to be very active and produce super powerful flares that could kill any life and sterilize the planet's surface. Also, those are low-mass stars and the habitable zone is closer to them. Which means that planets in that zone could be tidally locked and always face the star with the same hemisphere, which affects the climate. So even if those planets are in the habitable zone, we are not even sure life as we know it could exist there. Though there could be certain atmospheres or older red dwarfs can be not as active. Still, that type of stars is not the most promising one. Very recently, a flare from Proxima Centauri was detected and it was a hundred times more powerful than the most powerful solar flare. Probably wasn't very good for the Proxima Centauri B planet, and the star can produce such flares almost daily. There is a couple of exoplanets in habitable zones that are considered to be the most Earth-like, one of which is TOI 700d, and it's at a distance of about 100 light-years. And it's also orbiting a red dwarf. But is there any Earth-like planet around a star that is more Sun-like? We can open the NASA Exoplanet Catalog, select only planets known to be rocky, and we will see only 7 planets not farther than 100 light-years, and 5 more at a distance up to 130 light-years. Guess what type of star most of them orbit? Of course red dwarfs. There's only one orange dwarf, Kepler-444, but all of the known planets there are outside the habitable zone. Again, so far, not very promising. However, there could be more rocky planets. Status of some smaller planets has not just been confirmed yet. There is another list of potentially habitable planets for life as we know it, of course. Only eight of them are well inside our radio bubble, and only one is not orbiting a red dwarf. Oof. You can even simply go to the Wikipedia list of potentially habitable planets. And again, there is not many planets inside our radio sphere, most of them have not been confirmed to be rocky, and most of them orbit red dwarfs. There's only Tau Ceti F, a super-Earth only 12 light-years away, that could be in the habitable zone, and it even orbits a G-type sun-like star. Again, so far the number of such planets is not very impressive. 
But also we have to remember that we have a very limited knowledge about actual conditions on those planets. But even if we knew for a fact that there were several planets with perfect conditions for life, it wouldn't mean that life actually existed there, especially developed civilization capable of receiving our signals. Not to be a complete downer, I can say that at least we haven't discovered all of the planets and also more rocky planets can be confirmed from the ones that we know of. But there is one more thing. Let's not think for a moment about how unlikely it is for not just any life, but for a developed civilization to exist very close to Earth. Even if they did and had similar to ours level of technology, they wouldn't necessarily even be aware of our planet. Most of the known exoplanets so far were discovered via transit method. We don't see those planets directly, but we detect periodic dips in the star's brightness. For this to work, we must view a planetary system from a John. And this works both ways. It's called Earth's transit zone. It's a narrow region of a galaxy where Earth can be detected this way. Obviously, there are other methods to detect planets. But at least for us, so far this one has been the most effective. And the whole thing doesn't start to look better because of this. So on the one hand, signals we've been transmitting so far are detectable even with our level of technology. On the other hand, if we talk about life with biochemistry that we understand, in spite of a large number of stars, even in the small radius, now we know very few potentially habitable planets. So knowing what we know today, in my opinion, the chance that someone can actually detect our signals is vanishingly small. Also, because of switching to digital, some of the signals may no longer be leaking to space. So perhaps in future it would be even more difficult to detect us, at least in radio. But for those of you who wished for alien civilizations to know about us, there is still hope. If we let our imagination go wild and go beyond the limits we set for ourselves today, we might imagine that alien civilization way ahead of us that would not even need radio to find us. They could detect some techno-signatures, for instance, artificial light from the cities on the night side of our planet. Or if again the life is similar to ours, they could detect various biosignatures, for example, oxygen in the atmosphere. We are starting to study atmospheres of exoplanets, and there has been oxygen in our atmosphere for billions of years. So even if hypothetical aliens might not know about our civilization, the fact that there is some life on our planet might be already known across the whole galaxy. As usual, links to all of the sources are down below in the description, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!